This week we've got three demanding damsels. Hasn't got a garage. I wanted to go for a breakfast bar, but that's not going to work, is it? I'm afraid that's not good, Feng Shui. And one gallant knight. So what you can do is bring perspective. But does he triumph? Yeah, Ooh. this is it. This is my garden. Or fail in his quest. Stop, everyone, stop. To rescue this bevy of beauties. You like it, though, Phil. I live under the gosh. Yes. of Liverpool for a legal eagle desperate to find her perch. And for our very own liver birds who need a nest for their joined up family. But with evolving lives, do any of our Liverpool lasses know what they need? Well, at least they've agreed on the city. And this one is rich in maritime and music history. In the last decade, Liverpool's transformed itself into a cosmopolitan capital of culture. Its striking Georgian and Victorian architecture has wowed our house hunters who are longing for a period property to call their own. I'm with Kate Harland, a law student who's looking for a peaceful pad alone. Go on, off And I'm with community workers Kath Callahan and V. Wright. They met in cyberspace three years ago and clicked instantly. I think we complement each other. I'm probably more grounded and more practical. And much more, I'll get a sense of how things are. So we've got different yeah. ways of knowing yeah. things. You're more spiritual. Uh, yeah. Though, aren't you? <laughs> more. I won't say airy-fairy. Kath and V are currently renting together, but are pining for a place to call their own. It's hard being in rented accommodation because... It's a bit of a limbo, it's a, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Add in completely different outlooks to the mix, and it's no surprise this pair haven't found their perfect plot yet. I grew up in a family of five children, and then I've lived communally. Some of what Tethy tells me about the communal houses she's lived in, just I'm doing it now, it fills me with horror. I reckon the sound of this Ringo Starr wannabe might do the same, because there is another couple in this search, these noisy teenage boys. Meet 18-year-old Robbie and his 14-year-old gaming guru brother, Alex. OK, Alex. Ooh. Boys will be boys, and so they should be. But Kath's new to living with a pair of boisterous boys. It has been a bit of an issue. Me needed some private, quiet space to work in. And the boys needed space to do the things they enjoy. Kath's planning to start a therapy business from home, so securing a serene space for her clients is a must. And V is a keen gardener, but even after a year, weeding out the perfect property has not come easy. Chocolate cake! If it were just Kath and I, we'd have a much wider search area. Because Alex is 14, we need to stay in an area where he can get to school and where he's near his friend. But this search isn't all about pleasing V's kids. I don't think we're picky. We know what we want. Yeah, we are picky. We are picky. <laughs> Well, we're ladies of a certain <laughs> age. We have a right to be picky. Setting up home can be hard enough, but bringing quiet Kath together with V and her boys under one roof adds another difficult dimension. Time for me to take the stress out of this search. I can't, I've kind of got the gist of, of where you're at, but can we just kind of set the scene, if you could, for me in, in simplest terms? There's V and I... And if we stopped there, then we'd have found the house. But actually, there's also these two uh, sons. Robbie and Alex. So what's been going wrong? Have you been looking that hard? We're now looking for more outside space. Robbie will need space. Alex needs his own space. We need our own space. I need some space. <laughs> I need a lot of space. Hang on, Pip. V isn't finished yet. I've lived virtually all my life in Victorian or Edwardian houses with tall ceilings. And both our furniture yeah. fits in the... I know it sounds soft. Why don't we sell the furniture and buy new furniture? We do we, have moments, don't we, when we think, oh, let's you just chuck it all away. <laughs> <laughs> let's just chuck it and start again. Start. Does it matter? What, the furniture? Yeah. Yeah, and all no, your books. Not, not us. And your books. Stop, everyone, stop. stop. Everyone, we... stop. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can do, I think, is bring perspective to help us break out of this cycle okay. of looking, deciding, yes, that'll do, and then deciding, no, it won't, and going back to looking again. You've got yourselves in a bit of a pickle. 
because everyone has um, priorities and different priorities. And yeah, that is absolutely. that is normal, blending families together. It's just slightly more complicated in this instance. You said it. Four people, four totally different sets of priorities equals one very tricky search for me. Kath and V have a top budget of £330,000. They want a Victorian property with enough space for Kath and her clients and for the boys to let off steam. They've got to have high ceiling rooms to fit their furniture and a garden big enough for V to grow her own. My Merseyside search for their perfect family home will be based in the south of the city, around Allerton, the birthplace of the Beatles. About two miles west is the hip neighbourhood of Egbert, where today's cool kids and creatives live. So it's no surprise that our stylish law student Kate loves to hang out there. He's got the most mischievous grin. <laughs> After a gap year which lasted half a decade, smart student Kate knows it's time to cut back on the cocktails and knuckle down to her final year. Kate shares a house in Wavertree, but with five other students on the scene, space and peace is at a premium. You never know what you're going to come home to. So, like, you could be really wanting to just chill out and there'll be a huge party going on in the room. So it is hard to study. This savvy student has decided that, for her, the party is over. This next year at uni is going to be a lot of work. It's worth 70% of my degree and I'm doing quite well, miraculously. So I need to keep that momentum going. So having my own house next year will be a way for me to not be tempted into the drinking and the, and the student life so much. Kate isn't the first in the family to sample student life in this city. My dad went to Liverpool University as well. He used to live round the corner from where I live now, so there's a bit of a sentimental twist to it as well. But sadly, Kate's dad died three years ago. We didn't know, obviously, that he was going to pass away, so it came as a bit of a shock. Kate's dad made sure that even after he was gone, all his kids would be looked after. He wrote in his will that he wanted me and my brothers to buy a house each. That was really important to him, that he was making a provision that when he wasn't there anymore, that we still had somewhere to call home. Kate's been left an inheritance of £120,000. That's a lot of cash for a first-time buyer, so it's time for me to take the law into my own hands. Most people at 25 don't have all the money they need to buy a house. Are you worried about buying young and alone? I think my family all, are all expecting me to buy either something that is completely inappropriate, that completely blows the budget, or is going to fall down. So I'm determined to prove them Wrong. Are you the only girl in your yes. family? Yes. Yeah, you see, everybody thinks girls spend money frivolously. They just spend money on different things. Thank you. Two peas in a pod. Shh, Phil, I'm here to help this girl spend her money wisely. To have this money at this stage in your life is a godsend. You make it sound so perfect. <laughs> it is, it is perfect. It is, th there's only one thing you need, and that's me to hold your hand. Modesty's never been your strong point, has it, Kirsty? Kate's got £120,000, but if she falls for a pad that's a few grand over, she's got a little leeway to stretch her budget. She's after a spacious two- or three-bed house, which should have an open-plan living area. And it's got to be close to university. Sounds like a dream brief compared to my rather complicated search. Definitely under pressure this week on my search. They've got so many different people in the family and having different requirements, all pulling in different directions. How old are the boys? 14 and 18. Well, it's not their money. It's not a democracy. You can't have a house-hunting democracy. They are the couple, they are the adults, they decide which house they buy. <sighs> if only it was as easy as you make it out to be. Luckily, How I have about the you? easiest search. Okay, one person. One person, one excellent budget. Yeah. No problemo. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm under the cosh. You like it, though, Phil. 
It's a buyer's market in Liverpool, so with healthy budgets, it should mean that deals can be done. The average house price in Liverpool is just under £135,000, almost 30 grand below the UK average. Our search for Kath and B's perfect family home starts in the pretty suburb of Allerton, five miles south of the city, where the locals keep up the city's famously friendly reputation. In your opinion, what's so good about it? The people, the place, the parks, brilliant for families. There's uh, lovely houses around. We've got lots of local shops which are, you know, blossoming at the moment, it's really busy. And you've been here 50 years and you're happy? Yeah, I'm very happy, yeah. I don't, is it I'm, getting better, I'm, it's changing? I can't get any better, sir. <laughs> this is it. Brilliant. The first property I found is in their beloved Allerton, and it's a stone's throw from these boys' school. You know where we are? L18. Yeah, yeah. spot on location. Yeah, um, absolutely. First thoughts of the house. Nice looking house, nice. very nice. Hasn't got a garage. It hasn't got a garage, it's got some parking. Yeah. Mm. Can't play your drums in a parking space. We've got a, bit of, we've got a few rooms inside. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Fussy, okay. She? Yes. <laughs> Come on. And they're not even in yet. I think this Victorian terrace ticks all the boxes for this joined-up family. It's got character and bags of space without anyone having to be stuck out in a garage. It's almost five grand over budget, just under £335,000. But in a buyer's market, we should be OK. So we've got the living room. Okay. That second reception could be Kath's con consultation room. Mm -hmm. Dining room. Right. And moving through to the kitchen. How does it work for you in oh. terms of the layout of two living rooms, dining room, then kitchen? This dining room and kitchen being so close to the room that would be my work room, I think that's, that's the issue, really. I can see through the window that garden's <laughs> not my garden. Ooh. Ooh. There, was a, there was a slight grimace on your yeah. face as you came. Mm, it's a bit titchy. I'm immediately troubled by your description of this as titchy. <laughs> I've got a big mahogany wardrobe that I, I think even with those taken out, though, it would still be fit. small. You're not playing games with me, are you? No, You're not no, just saying no, it's no, titchy no. to wind me up. No, 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 we're serious. Find a house to fit their furniture? I smell trouble. I was really up for this because I'm, I'm just endlessly fascinated by the whole blended family thing. And, um, I'm now starting to reconsider that because this is a good house. It's a good starting point and they've completely torn it to shreds. Like most Victorian properties in Liverpool, the garden is small. Mm. No, I don't like the view out the back. I don't want to look out onto no. those houses. Which is more important? Is it the size of the garden or is it the style and character of the house? Um, for me, style and character of the house. That's more important, the garden. Yeah. And for me, probably the garden. Those answers don't help me <laughs> choose the next property. <laughs> um, so Do you want me I'm... to change my answer? No, no, no. no. You, you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> we understand the problem. We want it. And it's up to me to try and deal with it. <laughs> yeah. You need more luck than there is in the whole world, though. <laughs> this week, we're beating around on the banks of the Mersey trying to find perfect pads for our Liverpool lasses. It might be a long and winding road, but we know we can work it out. I'm with Kath and V, who failed to fall for my first Victorian property. The space didn't suit the family, so a change of character is called for. I'm with Kate, a law student with £120,000 inheritance to buy her first home. I'm taking her three miles southeast from her favourite area of Egbeth, to the up-and-coming Garston. This property is perfect for Kate's life now and it's got young professional written all over it for the future. So, here we are. Yep. We're in Garston, which is where a lot of the young professionals who might want to be in Egbeth but can't afford it come. <laughs> yeah. So the geography's positive? Yeah, it's positive. Sort of. Sort of. OK, right. Ish. Yeah. Ish. I can, I can tell there's an ish. Despite that ish, Kate will get plenty of bang for her buck in Garston. 
This pretty terrace has two large bedrooms and every young girl's dream, a massive bathroom, and there's even a pretty yard at the back. It's on just under £95,000, so she'd have a hefty chunk of cash to spare. Big, light, high ceilings. Exactly what I asked for. I like the open stairs as well. It reminds me yes. of my um, dad's house. Um, you can do all sorts of modern things with these stairs. So you can have open stairs which are glass or metal or whatever. You know, I mean, but you don't want to overspend. No. The important thing is not to spend the money on... Making the house too expensive for the yes. area. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. got it. You've already got the lingo. Do you think? Yeah. Go on, then you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay. She's the apprentice and all sop, you're fired. Not quite, Phil, not quite. Very nice out there, isn't Very it? Very nice. Yeah, really nice little area. It would be tempting to just put in a hot tub, wouldn't it? <laughs> or one of those Japanese baths. Kate could afford to bathe al fresco or make any other alterations she wants because this house is 25 grand under her budget. It's everything that I would ask for, although I... I wanted to go for a breakfast bar, but that's not going to work, is it? Well, you can. I mean, you could. That's the thing. You can do a different type of layout. Or if that ish about the area is actually an issue, she could spend more to get a similar house in a different area. I feel like if I'm walking in just going, well, no, I don't, I don't want this You're area, then. You can afford... To do it, so why wouldn't I? To do it, so why wouldn't you? Yeah, why wouldn't I? It was Kate's dad's wish that she put this money into property. She's worried about seeming like a brat because she doesn't like this area, she wants another area. The fact is that buying a house now is the right decision, she's doing the right thing, and she should be proud of that. If a better area is what Kate wants, then that is what I'm going to show her. But it's going to mean spending all of her budget before buying a property, think about what you want and where you want it. Whether it's a breakfast bar or being close to a coffee bar, knowing what matters to you and your lifestyle before you start the search will speed up the whole process. Kath and V are desperate to get their first home together. They love a Victorian property with enough space for Kath's consultations, V's teenage boys and a great big garden. All for £330,000. I'm sticking with Allerton for the next property, but moving this house hunt from Victorian to 1930s. 1930s, Sammy. Still close to the school, Not still in our very 18s. Close. Yeah, definitely. The thing is, with 30s properties, they do come with a bigger garden. Fantastic. So I thought we'd actually start by looking at the garden. Ooh. If our girls want bags of separate space, and a garden big enough for V, we need to look beyond the Victorian period. This 1930s semi has large rooms and lots of them. It hasn't got the high ceilings to fit their tall furniture, but it does have five bedrooms to accommodate everyone's need for separation. It's close to Robbie and Alex's school and is just under budget at £325,000. I wonder what V will make of the long view out back. Yeah, this is it. This is my garden. So that's you sorted? That's me yeah. sorted. <laughs> yeah. Does that mean you'll be keep quiet when we go inside? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Not a chance. There's so much space out back, they could even build a drum studio for Robbie and a games room for Alex. For me and Alex, if we've got this space outside, we only need tiny little rooms in there. This if I write that down, that. would you um, just give me your signature? That. <laughs> so that's half the family sold. A promising start, Pip. But one of my favourite bits inside the house is the hallway. Which... Ah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah. yes. I think it's really very special. The Brilliant. floor is beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Oh, look. Plate rack. Yeah. Yep. All our plates. Yeah. Outside space, tick, period, features, tick, rack for their plates, tick. Another lovely stained glass window. Oh, We've got lovely. four bedrooms and it's here. And another floor. And the oh. fifth up there. Ah. Oh, yes. Yes. Fab. Brilliant. Love it. This house has got something for everyone. They'd be daft to dismiss it, but is quiet Kath feeling V's love? I feel like I should like it. Something holding you back. There's something, and I, I, do, I can't put my finger on it. Watch out, Spencer. Kath's coming over all cats and crystals. I'm not as enthusiastic as you, I right. think. Right, OK. But um, I want to like it. 
for you. Because I, mean, okay. I want to be there with you. They are batting it back between one another, aren't they? Mainly we've talked about Victorian houses yeah. that have high ceilings. Yeah. Maybe yeah. It's, it's that, it's just coming up just against coming something up against. different. Mm. Same as me out here. It's 1930s. Yeah, this Actually, is. our furniture doesn't fit. Except I am consistent. If we got furniture that did fit, that could be so exciting, couldn't yeah. it? Because that's yeah. a, that would... Oh, I love that era. Yeah. yeah. Really, I'm yeah. excited. Good on her. Kath talks herself round to this place and a shopping trip all on her own. How'd you get on? Very well, it was. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, definitely. Very interesting. Very exciting. Yeah. We'd have to ditch all our furniture, but but there's an excuse <laughs> to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the only issue, it's a. I'm happy. <laughs> I am happy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Homeward bound. Whoa, early bath. Don't forget behind your ears, Phil. Well, there's still plenty of work to do on your watch with Kate. She's taking her first tentative step into home ownership. I'm taking her three miles north of her favourite area of Egbeth and closer to her current home in Wavertree. We've discovered that interior layout is important for our girl, so I've got a rather interesting proposition. Now, what we're doing today is quite unorthodox. Right. That is the house we're going to see. That is the house we want it to be. OK? Bear that in mind. OK. Will do. We've bagged Kate a third bedroom in this house because I think she should consider renting one to a mate. The property's had some work done and so is in a half-finished state, but I'm hopeful that my smart student will see its potential. It's at the top of Kate's budget at just under £120,000. Really, you're just looking at this house from the point of view of saying, what's at the back, what's at the front, where is it, what does it cost? And what can I do to it? And that brings us to the kitchen. Probably not to Kate's taste or tickling her open plan fancy. Well, not yet. So basically, this goes. Yeah. So you, you have, have an a L. big kitchen. Yeah, exactly. I could have my breakfast bar. You could have a breakfast bar. Yay! 100%. Right, upstairs, there are not one, not two. But three bedrooms. What is the third bedroom for? Clothes. No, no, wrong answer. Oh, a tenant to someone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fast learner. That's my gal. I love how much value you can add to this house. And I really like how open Kate was to that. For a first time buyer, she's quite brave. And with investment in mind, I've sweet-talked the neighbour who's allowed us to sneak a peek at the end product. We go from one house yeah. to the next. Inside is a mirror image, but a whole lot lovelier to look at. The wall between the dining room and the kitchen has been whipped out to make this attractive L-shaped living space. I love this feel, this great big room. Well, it's exactly what I'd want, a nice yeah. L-shape as well, so the kitchen's still a little bit hidden. Obviously, I need to work out how much it would cost to get that to this. It's not a massive job, but it will test the flexibility of Kate's 120,000 budget. There's a wall to lose, a kitchen to refit, and the must-have breakfast bar to install. A good estimate would be around £12,000. If you've fallen for a property with project potential but aren't sure how to go about it, try charming your way into a place where the hard work's already been done and dusted. It could give you inspiration for interiors and more trade contacts than you ever dreamed of. So, does Wavertree do the trick? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's a good. It's a maybe. It's a maybe. Yes. It's a good maybe. It's a good solid maybe, yes. To end day one with a good solid maybe is more than I often get, and I am not greedy. Day one. Success. Yeah. Good. So we've already got a definite maybe each and more houses to see on the morrow. Day two means a gear change for Kath and V's search. Victorian terraces in the area they want don't have gardens big enough for V. So Kirsty's joining me today to show them a dream house with a dream garden. Trouble is, it's 10 miles from Allerton in the pretty suburb of Crosby an area Kath knows well. We're still in Merseyside, but right on the north edge of Liverpool, and a worrying half-hour drive from Alex and Robbie's school. Eek. V, I can sense you're having heart palpitations behind me. 
walking up this street in Crosby. <laughs> true or false? What? Completely true. I have no idea where I am. Completely outside my comfort zone. Um, a little reaction to the prospect of travelling and boys' school. Um, it bothers me quite a lot. The location might be causing concern for V, but this house is going to be hard to beat. Inside, there's 1,722 square feet of Victorian gorgeousness. Five bedrooms, three receptions, high ceilings to fit their furniture and fantastic separation of rooms for the family's conflicting needs of space. It's on at £340,000, which is 10 grand over budget, but then everything's negotiable. Built in the 1870s, five bedrooms, big garden, two or three reception rooms. But all the way coming here, I could feel the tension in the car rising and rising. Um, not happy, are you, love? No. No. I'm going to take V to see the kitchen. I think okay. she needs to sit down. <laughs> Guys, no, no, we'll, we'll head upstairs. You couldn't wish for a better space in which to set up a home therapy business. But will Kath's clients make the trek out to Crosby? I'm thinking, yes, I know this area. I'm in my comfort zone. But I've moved away from where I've been building the connections. So do you feel if, if you were to live here, actually your work would suffer as a result? I think it probably would. So Kath's gone cool on Crosby. I didn't see that one coming. This property is a perfect fit for their life. But it isn't just the distance from the boys' school that's causing the quandary. Would you be afraid that you would see less of Alex because actually when you get to that age, your mates are so important yeah. to you? I would be worried about that, but then I also think at 14, you know, between 14 and 18, he might well be doing different things anyway. You know, there's a bit of me that holds back and thinks it's two years too early, and a bit of me thinks, well, why not? Why not do it now? Mmm, well, sounds like V could come round to the idea of living in Crosby. Obviously, all this space is very tempting, but is it tempting enough to make them make up their minds about such a massive move? And there's two more flipping rooms up here. I know, I know. Everyone in the family is trying to help one another and not weigh too heavily on their own issues. Well, I think this is a very healthy thing to do, to come here, discuss it. There's a lot of healthy discussion going on in that family. Not much decision-making. So, will they make a decision about this place? It's an absolutely amazing house. I absolutely love it. Is it still a contender? Yeah, yes, I think. Yes, <laughs> yes, probably, yes. Definitely, maybe. Definitely, maybe. You, you're better off out of here. I am devastated that I have to go. <laughs> I, 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 Not as devastated as I am, Kirsty. I think I need therapy, because this pair are really testing my metal now. This week, we're pounding the pavements in Liverpool with two sets of keen buyers. They've run straight into a brick wall, and they need us to help them smash through to happy homes for the future. I'm struggling to help a family find harmony in a house they can all call home. And I've got a single girl with only herself to please. She's got the cash, she just needs the confidence. Cap and V were seduced by the space in Property 3, but they weren't entirely lured by the location. So the pressure's on to pull it out of the bag with the final property. And I'm working for a young Liverpool-loving law student, Kate. She's got £120,000 inheritance to spend on her first grown-up home after her father sadly passed away. Kate's looking to stay close to Egbeth in South Liverpool. She adores the laid-back, villagey feel of this bohemian neighbourhood and she isn't the only one to fall for its charms. This is an iconic part of Liverpool. It's got a real buzz about it. The shops are amazing. It's just got something for everybody, really. It's got lovely parks around here, loads of lovely places to eat out. Here's hoping that the stressed out Mr Spencer will feel the love in Igbert. Please remember, I've come for an easy time today. <laughs> Don't make anything difficult, OK? I I'm not promising anything. <laughs> this next property is in the heart of Kate's dream area of Egbert. You've got the location, right, bang on. And inside, it just gets better, cos this property is a blank canvas. If Kate isn't afraid of knocking down walls, this pad could give her the open-plan living space she craves. 
This three bedroom period terraced house has large high ceiling rooms. It's currently empty and being sold privately, so Kate could complete and move in super quick. This house is at the top of Kate's £120,000 budget. You need to get in here, strip the whole place. Take the walls out yeah. if you want an open plan. Depends yeah. how open plan you want it. Like the house, like the house yesterday, yeah. I want a big L. Yeah. By removing a couple of walls, Kate could get a breakfast bar just like the one next door to property number two. It's bang on the money that I've got. Obviously, it doesn't leave any money to do the work, but that can be found. That's good news because it will take a few grand to create the open plan living space that she wants. So I still reckon it makes sense to rent a room to a fellow student to cover her costs. This is the second room. This There's is the second one. Front room, box room. So this would be my wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm winding you up. <laughs> it would Come be, on. Really be good the room that you would Come rent out. Oh dear, Kirsty, Kate's not exactly sounding convinced. And then here would be your master bedroom. No, you are renting that other room. She doesn't have to. No, she she might want to live on her own. Because she's, she's, cause she wants to, to, to not come out of uni with debts. What would you rather? Do you want to live on your own and pay the bills? Or... Have you ever lived on your own? No, but that's what I quite want to try, is living on my own. Renting a room could give Kate an income of about three grand per year. And with most students leaving university in debt, that kind of cash is not to be sniffed at. It's supposed to be about doing well in my degree next year, which will then set me up financially, hopefully, for much longer than a tenant would. That is a poor, poor I thought it was a brilliant economic no, twist on the no, argument. No, that you she you will be a good own. barrister, but that was a poor excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Objection, Your Honour. Overruled, Spencer. I'm just giving Kate the best advice I can. And I'm sure she'll be happy whatever she decides with her own mind. I feel my job is not just to find the house for her, but set her on the right path. With Kirsty clucking over Kate like a mother hen, it's time for me to bring some impartiality back to this search. Your job is to find a house for her. It's not to tell her how to, how to live. It's sensible to rent a room, yes, and you are is. deliberately undermining that argument for I, kicks I, because I, you're I, cross I, that your search is difficult. True. Yeah, Mine true. is extremely you. difficult, you heard that. and yours true. is extremely straightforward. Hopefully our bickering hasn't distracted Kate from seeing the potential of this perfect pad. Seen anything that troubles you? No. Could it be home? Yeah, I think it could, yeah. I'd obviously want to find out how much the work would cost mm -hmm. and yeah. things like that. Mm. But, yeah, it ticks all the boxes. It's a strong house. Very good for me. Yeah. 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 Kate seems smitten with this house. Will the job be manageable and within her grasp financially? I'm beetling back to the right side of Liverpool, where I've got one last chance to help Kath and V find the right home for all concerned. The ladies loved my big period pad in Crosby, but can't afford a similar place close to the boys' school in Allerton. So, for my final trick, I've got a creative solution, a chance to build the perfect home in the right location. For that, we're back in their preferred area for a walk on the wild side. Uh, is this it? This is it. OK. Oh. OK, this OK. Is my now, hang walk. on, hang on. I know we said we went scared to a <laughs> bit of work. Yep, don't judge this book by the current cover. It's the mother of all renovation projects, an opportunity to create a beautiful, bespoke home fitting the entire family's disparate needs. It's on the market at £180,000, which is seriously under their budget, and it's only one mile from Alex and Robbie's school. Structurally, the house is actually in great condition. The roof is good, the walls are good, the okay. render's good. OK. So we're looking at rewiring, replumbing. Kitchen, bathrooms. Kitchens, bathrooms, yeah, yeah. windows. But it does, I think, give you an opportunity to design your own space. It's a strange house, isn't it? I don't think they're sold yet, but then I am gambling the scale of the project will be their only concern. We're on a sort of corner, aren't we, here, with two roads converging, and I'm afraid that's not good feng shui. That's for real? That's for real, yeah, because the energy is coming like arrows and hitting at this house. <gasps> what was that? 
Was that Phil's brain exploding? What I would say is that in order to take this on, you need to love it. Yes. Yeah. I'm not loving it. I'm not I'm loving it. it. So they failed to fall for my plan of building the bespoke blended family home in their dream location. But luckily, we have two feng shui friendly contenders still in the fray. Over in Egbeth, my girl's not beating around the bush. Kate's got designs on property number three, the period terrace with potential for open plan living. It's time for another look. If, like Kate, you've fallen for a pad that needs a facelift, then bring a tradesman to your second viewing. With their beady eye on the job, you'll work out how much DOS you need and can pitch your offer to match. I've asked local builder Chris Murphy along to work out whether it's wise to take these walls down. This one is not a problem. This is yep. fairly straightforward. Yep. This one's a bit more intricate because you've got a low burden. I'd say on that, 16, 1700 quid. On this one, maybe about 2,500 upwards. Right, but it would make a great room. I don't want to spend too much money on a house. No. Especially just so I can have a breakfast bar. I really like that. Yeah, that's a two and a half thousand pound breakfast bar. Mm. There's lots to think about. Kate loves this house, but will the numbers stack up? For Kath, V and the boys, there are two properties in the running. This one's all about space versus location. Will it be large and lovely in Crosby or local and lovely in Allerton? Finding a home to suit this family's needs and deal with their indecision has been a bit of a challenge, and it isn't over yet. Last night, they sent me a text saying they wanted to go back to Crosby and they were feeling very excited about it. This morning, they sent a text saying that they wanted to meet me here at this one. So, the habit remains. Morning, Robbie, Morning. must Morning. be Phil. Morning. How do you do? <laughs> Alex. Hi, Alex, Hello. good to meet you both. Well. <laughs> What's been going on? <laughs> Twists and yeah. turns, you're keeping me on the hop, aren't you? Didn't expect to be back here. Well, no. so last night you were keen on Crosby. We were, and then we were yeah. going to go back to Crosby. Four o'clock this morning, I said, I just need to ask you, do you really want <clears throat> to live in Crosby? And I said no. So? So by half past five, yeah. I put Alex out of his misery yeah. and went straight into Alex and said, hey, love, you fancy living a lot nearer school, near your mate? And he went, yeah. Yeah. Great. Didn't tell me. <laughs> but we didn't tell Robbie. I found out ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> At long last, we've got a location to suit everyone in this Fab Four. Now let's see what the lads make of the space in the semi. This would be Alex's, because he's going to have somewhere to do his gaming somewhere else, is yeah. what's in our heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to give me the yeah. attic. <laughs> we don't want to give you the attic. Or, it seems, the back bedroom. I'm thinking this would work for my therapy room. Therapy yeah, room. yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. It'd be nice, actually, wouldn't it? It'd be it quiet would. and out the way. Yeah, it's at the back of the house. So if your therapy room was here, mm -hmm. maybe we could do an outside room for the boys for a den when they wanted to be noisy. Building an outside den means Robbie could perfect his percussion to his heart's content. Glorified garden sheds come in all shapes and sizes, and the price tag reflects that. It could be done for somewhere between five and ten grand, depending on the size okay. of it. Yep. And you could get an amazing room down there for having mates around your own little den. You can misbehave and yeah. no yep. one will ever know. <laughs> You're a bad man. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? She's perfect, really. He is a bad man. It's all sounding very positive. I'm yeah. kind of waiting for someone to change their mind. <laughs> Everyone's I, nodding. I think we're all positive. really, yeah, I think very positive. Just keep that momentum going, yeah. nodding, <laughs> nodding, <laughs> nodding. Yeah, I think we're on. Finally, I got all I ever wanted from Kath and V. A decision. Now it's time for me to bring the house in on budget. It's on the market for 325000 Okay. It's been on the market for a couple of weeks. I've had quite a lot of interest. I think I've had 13 viewings. Oh. I've had an offer. Okay. However, your situation as chain-free buyers suits them. Do you all have a figure? We were looking somewhere around 315 to 318. I'd like to be buying it for 315. I'd really like to buy it for 310. I don't know no. if that's possible. Okay. But, but I'm always inclined to give these things a go. I'm going to recommend that we make an offer of 307 and a half. And again, that would be brilliant. Okay. My hard Let's get into it. 
David, good afternoon to you. This is Phil Spencer. They would be delighted to buy that house for £307,500. It's brave, but is it enough? This week's Merseyside house hunt has been cruel and kind in equal measure. With law student Kate making life pretty marvellous for me. Whereas I have had the world to please with a joined up family with conflicting requirements. Both sets of house hunters have fallen for properties in their dream location. And it's up to us to try and bag a bargain for them. Kate's keen to make an offer on the period terrace in Exeter. From the outset, we've always known that we've probably got to pay 120 for that house. I think it's a fair price, and I think if I don't pay that, somebody else will. Kate Harland, are you ready to spend £120,000 on your first home, a three-bed terraced house in Egbeth? Yeah, 100%. The house isn't being marketed through an agent, so I have to call the vendor directly. Harry, it's Kirsty, all stop. Thank you very much for letting us go back and see the house again, second time. Obviously, the house is vacant and Kate is eager to purchase it as soon as possible. So, I have been asked by Kate Harland, who is a cash buyer, and that means cash, actual money under the bed, readies, to offer you £120,000 for your house. Two miles across town, Kath, V and the boys have decided to sacrifice space to stay in a location they all love. And our offer is going in at £17,000 beneath the asking price. Many thanks. Speak to you soon. Bye. Um, a little bit low. Yeah. We mustn't be disappointed okay. if that's no, turned no, down. No, I would no, expect no. it would be. I would be... expect that. See what happens. Um... We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's a tense time for the whole family, so thankfully we don't have to hang about for a reply. That was quite quick work. How'd you get on? OK. We've had another conversation about the likelihood of 307.5 being accepted or not, and if it wasn't, what would we do at this end, and how much they really like the house, and if push came to shove, how much they would um, end up being happy to pay for that house. The, the offer is 315. That's what they pay. Appreciate it. Cheers, David. Thank you. Bye. So... We just have to sit tight and wait. See what happens. Easier. Easier said than yeah. done, but worth waiting for, I think. Meanwhile, Kate doesn't have to wait long for an answer. That is the quickest transaction I have ever made, Harry. <laughs> Superb news. Kate's got herself a first home. Her dad would have been proud. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Bought me a house. Yay! Well done. Well done, Do me. Do you think he'd be pleased? I, yeah, he would be very pleased. I'm in Liverpool, I'm in the city. It's a great house and I'm happy, so he would have been happy. Yay! Here's to what your dad wanted. Cheers. Thanks, Dad. Finally, my legal eagle finds her nest. After their second offer of 315 is rejected overnight, Kath and V now have to sit it out and wait for me to give them the verdict on their next bid of £317,500. Oh! That's Phil. Hello, Phil. All right, hi, is that Karen? Yes, it is. Hi. Uh, are you with me as well? Yes, I'm here too. Superb, because I have some good news. The property is yours. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Well done to you all. Thanks, Phil. Love. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. OK, bye. bye. Oh. Did he really say that? I think he did really... Did he really, really say that? Yes, he really, really did. And if ever a family deserved a proper home together, it's this one. Six weeks later, Kate has had a change of heart about taking on the project of the Egbeth house. I just wasn't really prepared to do that much work, so I walked away from the sale. It's a blow, but I'm delighted that it's not been the only change of heart round here. I've 
taken a lot of things on board. I'm thinking about taking a lodger, which I was dead against at the time. Kirsty, your guidance has been noted. I feel a lot more experienced now. It's all been good, very positive, and I'm sure I'll have a happy ending. The next property that I find will be just as good. Sorry, Kirsty. I reckon she'll give you a run for your money one day, Kirsty. Meanwhile, Kath and V are just weeks away from getting the keys to their first family home together, and already they know what's going to be what. As soon as we move in, that'll be it. I'll be out in the garden. I'll be up in my loft. Oh, I'll be looking at you in the garden. Working hard. Watching me working in the yeah. garden. Yeah. And then we'll be having a party. A garden, garden party. party. <laughs> they may be talking as one now, but this house hunt was all about bringing together a raft of different needs. Phil was definitely like a kick up the pants. <laughs> totally. But they did get us down to a T, didn't they? Yes, yeah. I think they've got you down to a T, Phil. And you did seal the deal for the whole family. It's the end of a very long search and um, very excited. Very excited. Yeah. very excited, very relieved, you know. It really is the start of our life together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's our first house together. Yeah, really pleased with it. Yeah. yeah.